Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing, and this is episode one of Nick's Reviews, where I review O-Scale and O-Gauge motive power, cars, and accessories. Today, episode one has been dedicated to my Lionel number 1666, which is here on the tracks for you guys. And this engine has a lot of sentimental value to me. This is one of the first projects that my father and I completed together, I want to say almost 15 years ago. This whole engine was taken apart and placed in a box in the back of a hobby shop, and the owner of the hobby store just wanted it out. This is a very complicated, um, articulated engine for all the uh, parts in here, which we'll go through later in the review. So after we were done building this engine, it had a couple of weird things with it, but we had everything rewired on the inside, and it works beautifully. Um, some people consider this engine a pre-war engine for it being built some people say in 1945 into 1946. Now, I would consider this a very, very early post-war engine for it being in 46. So the Lionel 1666 is a 262, meaning two, six drivers, and then two back here. And this is an 027 model after a Baldwin Prairie locomotive. And the Baldwin Prairies were built in 1917. Roughly 196 were built and this model was produced between 1946 and 1947. So the stock tender, which is not this tender here, I just grouped it with this. This actually is an MPC tender. All the trucks are plastic. The original tender would have had the nice die cast trucks. So the stock tender with this model would have come with a 2466W and that was in production in 1945. So it probably was left over. They were producing them like crazy. They would put them with other steam engines to complete the set. That also has a W after it, so I'm assuming that would have had a whistle unit inside. This tender is much lighter than a whistle tender, which helps the engine pull a little bit better. Sometimes those whistling tenders can be quite heavy. There are four variants of this engine. They call it an A, B, C, and a D model. <laughs> so it has four variants. The variant A would have had black handrails instead of the silver. More detailing up on the sand domes and steam domes here. Also your bell was on a swivel, not a uh, riveted or stamped bell placed in the mold. Also your number boards would have been placed on a metal piece, uh, most likely a piece of nickel. And also they would have had die casted piloted trucks. So up here, this is a stamped metal truck, very similar to a pre-war steam engine. The variant B would have had silver handles, and then everything else was the same as variant A. Variant C had less sand dune detail, like here. Silver rails, same as at what you guys see here. A non-die casted pilot truck without screws, so it would have had the longer pins placed in here, most likely like a horseshoe pin. The number boards are stamped directly to the cab, which are rubber stamped just like this one here. And that was also produced in 1947. So that was your 1947 variant. The variation D had rubber X stamped inside the cab here, which would have been with a white or chrome. Other cool features with this engine, I do like the detailing up front here with all the rivets and then all of the moving parts with your drive wheels here. I can actually move this back by hand to show you guys. A lot of articulating parts. It also has two gems up here to represent the lanterns. Uh, very common to have one of these missing. When we purchased the engine, it actually only had the one gem in there. I haven't found a replacement. Uh, also has a headlight, does not have an operating smoke unit. This model also has a three position E unit, which runs very smooth on this engine. And also just some of the other detailing riveting up here, the nice handrail, you have some air, it looks like an air tank here. You have stuff for the injector system. Just very nice, subtle stamping in the mold here. Also, some of these parts that move in here are plastic, like this here, near your um, pistons here. Then also this for the crank is also plastic. So those are two downsides. I haven't had any issues with them, but if you would drop it or if it would crash or derail, uh, that would probably be one of the first parts to go. So I did some searching online to figure out a price range for these engines of the resale uh, price range. On eBay, you could find them for about 80 bucks after shipping. 
and the higher end on eBay was around $400, and that's all US currency or USD. Uh, 400 bucks is usually if they have everything correct on these, no defects at all, and the original tender, everything must be working, but that is a very high price point. You could probably find these even cheaper than 80 bucks at a train show, minus your entrance fees and such. You could probably find one for, I'd say 50 to $100. All right guys, so the engine is further down the track so you guys can see it move up and down the uh, passing track here. This engine is equipped with a three position E unit. It's also conventionally controlled. So just track and a transformer and you're rolling around the track. So let's see what position it's stuck in right now. All right, there's forward. And I heard a click, so we're in reverse. Engine runs extremely smooth. All right, so the engine is operating quite well. It's very smooth. The engine's very quiet. It's not like the uh, some of the other post-war or pre-war engines that have a very loud motor or E unit. So I'm going to connect some post-war cars to this engine and see how she does. All right, see how well this engine tackles the switch. All right, pretty well. So I would say this engine is a great runner. You actually get that nice ozone smell after running it. Uh, it is very fast, so if these cars were to detach, this engine would go flying. So that is something to watch out for. But overall, I think this engine's great. All right, guys, so after running this engine, I wanted to run it through a couple tests. So I noticed pulling power, yes, it struggles in pulling. Uh, I believe this engine originally would have had a set of tin plate passenger cars with it, or was offered as a set that would be great for the set. So if you guys are into tin plate or have some of the newer cars with less rolling resistance or even some of the MPC era stuff, that would run great with this engine. Yes, I love post-war cars. They can just be a little, a little too heavy for some of these older engines. That's not a problem at all. Uh, this engine did great around my 027 switches down there. And also it triggered the um, anti-derail function of the switch perfectly. It did not derail, did not derail any of the cars. So all of the gaps with the uh, switching mechanisms closed up. So I didn't experience anything catastrophic. So usually I run this engine with a set of MPC era Pensy, I believe it's a 1600 passenger set. Uh, train works great and it doesn't really need a whole lot of power. It doesn't really draw that much amperage either. So it's keeping the motor nice and cool. I'm not burning up my brushes in there. It's not overheating. You do get that uh, nice um, ozone smell when you run these older engines, especially if you're cranking down on them, but you wanna give them a rest. These engines are quite old. But overall, this is a beautiful piece. It works great. I'd recommend picking one up if you're new to the hobby or if you've never seen one before and you like older Lionel engines, definitely pick one up. These are great pieces. They will last a lifetime, even with uh, some of the scarring on this engine, even my bent handrail, doesn't matter. This engine is perfect in my eyes. Please consider giving the video a like, giving me a comment. Maybe you guys have one of these engines growing up or you still have one to this day. And also if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for future content just like this. But that's gonna do it today, guys, for episode one of Nick's reviews of the Lionel 1666. Thank you so much.